Do you hate the squishiness of an alchemist? I do, but I might have found a solution. Possibly, maybe, I don't know. Listen and find out. Dun 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 dun. B sides. Hello and welcome to Pathfinder B sides. I am your host, Professor Phoenix. Today we're going to be talking about the alchemist archetype, Clone Master. That's right, send in the clones. Yeah, so today, as always, let's start off with the flavor text from the D20 PFSRD. Clone masters practice duplicating existing creatures in order to better understand how to create new life. It's short, sweet, and to the point. You know what you're getting out of it as soon as you see it. But uh, let's let's go ahead and talk about some features, man. Starting off, the Clone Master gets a slight tweak to the bomb. A Clone Master's bombs deal damage one die step lower than normal. So, you know, the regular bombs deal D4s instead of D6s. The concussive bombs deal 1D3s and so on. This otherwise functions as and replaces the standard Alchemist bomb class feature. So, hooray. That uh, it's it's already starting off on a downturn. Let's let's see if this you know bumps up or anything. The next one that we're getting is called Lesser Simulacrum. At seventh level, a clone master adds Lesser Simulacrum to his formula book as a third level extract. Now, for those of you that aren't really sure how Lesser Simulacrum works, the casting time is an hour. Normally, this is a fourth level sorcerer wizard spell of the illusion school, all right? And generally, what it's going to be is it's basically a clone, you know, someone or something that lasts for an hour per level. And this bad boy is made out of like snow or ice. Well, I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. It's, it's basically it's a snow clone instead of a snow cone. Yeah, don't worry. I'll be here all week. The actual description for the spell says. This spell functions as simulacrum, except you can't create simulacrum of a creature whose HD or levels exceed your caster level, and it has no magical abilities. This creature is not under your control, though it recognizes you are its creator. So there's some fun, you know, GM ability there, as well as like good level for roleplay and using this. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we'll talk about the actual simulacrum later. Because it is a fun spell. Next up, we've got Rebirth, which at 8th level, a clone master can prepare a clone of himself that awakens if he is slain. Creating the clone costs 5,000 gold, takes one week of work, and requires three additional weeks for the clone to grow to maturity. If he dies, the clone awakens as if the alchemist had used the clone spell on himself. He can have one inert of himself at a time. Unused clones created by the clone master do not rot. This ability replaces poison resistance plus six and poison immunity. So on this one, it feels like, I mean, you still get the earlier poison resistances, which I, you know, whatever, cool. But when are you going to use it? And same deal for the poison immunity. This is basically a uh, uh, in-game reason to not have to worry about poison, because hey, if you die, you got another you coming, right? Yeah? Okay, okay, cool. I'm just making sure we're all still on the same page. And then next up, we've got the actual ability called Simulacrum. At 13th level, a clone master adds Simulacrum to his formula book as a 5th level extract. So, going back over here to the actual spell description, this bad boy's got a casting time of 12 hours. It has a vocal, somatic, and material component, which is an ice sculpture of the target plus powdered rubies worth 500 gold per HD of the simulacrum. That's really important with the ice sculpture of the target. So, like, in your downtime, just be like, I bought these ice sculptures and put them into a cold box just for this exact moment, just in case. Oh, uh, again, a good role play spot if you know you're into it. It says it has a range of zero feet, so I'm assuming that means you got to be touching that bad boy, girl, 
that person, you've got to be touching the person that you wish to turn into a simulacrum. Now, for the fun part, this is uh, actually simulacrum creates an illusory duplicate of any creature. The duplicate creature is partially real and formed from ice or snow. It appears to be the same as the original, but it only has half of the real creature's levels or HD and the appropriate hit points, feats, skill ranks, and special abilities for a creature of that level or HD. You cannot create a simulacrum of a creature whose HD or level exceeds twice your caster level. You must make a disguise check when you cast the spell to determine how good the likeness is. A creature familiar with the original might detect the ruse with a successful perception check, opposed by the caster's disguise check or a DC 20 sense motive check. At all times, the simulacrum remains under your absolute command. No special telepathic link exists, so command must be exercised in some other manner. A simulacrum has no ability to become more powerful. It cannot increase its level or abilities. If reduced to zero hit points or otherwise destroyed, it reverts to snow and melts instantly into nothingness. A complex process requiring at least 24 hours, 100 gold per hit point, and a fully equipped magical laboratory can repair damage to a simulacrum. So, all in all, a lot of sweet, sweet roleplay ability in this one. Uh, you need to be able to, like I would... Maybe if I was planning on doing this, I would definitely be bumping up my disguise at least till I have like maybe a plus 13 or 15, then I would lay off on it. Because, you know, you, you roll and generally it looks like the DC on this is either opposed by a, a perception or a, a DC 20 sense motive. Still, it's pretty cool. You know, you, you got a snow clone of yourself. And how often do you get to call something a snow clone? Huh? I mean... The puns, it's, it, it has an end. It's only Snow Clone. All right, so finally, we've got the actual clone ability. At 16th level, a clone master adds clone to his formula book as a 6th level extract. And uh, going back over to what the spell itself does, um, this is normally an 8th level sorcerer wizard spell or a 8th level witch spell. So it's, you know, it's already pretty you know, top-notch. The casting time for it's 10 minutes, and this spell makes an inner duplicate of a creature. If the original individual has been slain, its soul immediately transfers to the clone, creating a replacement, provided that the soul is free and willing to return. The original's physical remains, should they still exist, become inert and cannot thereafter be restored to life. If the original creature has reached the end of its natural lifespan, that is, it has died of natural causes. Any cloning attempt fails. To create the duplicate, you must have a piece of flesh, not hair, nails, scales, or the like, with a volume of at least one cubic inch that was taken from the original creature's living body. The piece of flesh need not be fresh, but it must be kept from rotting. Once the spell is cast, the duplicate must be grown in a laboratory for 2d4 months. When the clone is completed, the original's soul enters it immediately, if that creature is already dead. The clone is physically identical to the original and possesses the same personality and memories as the original. In other respects, treat the clone as if it were the original character raised from the dead, including its gaining of two permanent negative levels, just as if it had been hit by an energy-draining creature. If the subject is first level, it takes two points of constitution drain. If this would reduce its con to zero or less, it can't be cloned. If the original creature gained permanent negative levels since the flesh sample was taken, the clone gains these negative levels as well. The spell duplicates only the original's body and mind, not its equipment. A duplicate can be grown while the original still lives or when the original soul is unavailable but the resulting body is merely a soulless bit of inert flesh which rots if not preserved okay there's a lot to digest there um so for this portion of the clone master 
generally speaking, if you have a long, open-ended game, then this would be pretty friggin' sweet for you. If you're having a mad dash to, to kill all the clones, this would be pretty sweet for your uh, your big, what is it, big bad ending guy, you know. And uh, that would be cool, actually. Like, as you go through, you're killing all of these clones, and each time you kill a clone, you're actually fighting a weaker version of the clone. So, like, you basically, it's it's crazy sauce. I, I would love it. That that sounds like a really dumb, stupid, fun adventure. But, like, the, the weaker he grows, his followers, like, get stronger. Or he has stronger followers, you know, assisting each clone. Like, maybe originally it's just a band of mercenaries watching over this dude. They fail him, so he goes back to his temple or, or his laboratory or his wing and the local you know military or whatever I'm, I'm just saying it can be done it sounds sweet and um honestly it looks like none of this is really replacing anything it's it's dropping down the damage you do with a bomb but you get to live forever and you can clone your teammates um and then the the other one is yeah, that, that's uh, you lose poison resistance and poison immunity, which psh, lame. I mean, I'm I'm fairly certain that this is a pretty sweet, you know, upgrade. It looks like yeah, fortitude being your your main one of your main saves. By the time you're losing poison immunity plus six, you already have a plus six to fortitude saves. So, you know, pretty solid. Uh, it does say that the following discoveries complement the Clone Master archetype. You've got Alchemical Simulacrum, Doppelganger Simulacrum, Preserve Organs, and Parasitic Twin. Now, it's nice and all that that they're saying that these are solid choices, but I mean, all in all honesty, I would be bumping up my bombs as high as possible. Um, I would absolutely be like a halfling or... Or, or maybe something with some flavors, like maybe a dro, drow, however you call it. I, I would do something a little interesting with it. But um, this is actually a pretty good archetype. Uh, I've played it myself, and I think I got up to the actual simulacrum ability before the game ended. So I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, eventually, when I was high enough in level, I was actually able to create like my own lab and then like basically just start growing it and naturally my uh my alchemist was of the i think he was chaotic neutral and he was starting to lean into chaotic evil which was pretty sweet um i'm, I'm not going to go into a whole D, &D story because i figure you don't come here for that you come here for awesome ideas and you know archetypes so anyways if you want to hear more about that i'll be glad to tell you but as of right now, Clone Master, it's pretty solid. It got, it, like, if I had three thumbs, it would get three thumbs up. It's definitely a really solid archetype. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, definitely go check out the Patreon. It's, it's nice. It's up. It's running. Um, our Discord, where we like to argue and talk awesome things and talk about builds and just different ideas that we have for stuff. Like, it's, it's pretty solid. The Discord is fun. Also, I have a Twitter. Like, I'm, I'm tweeting stuff. I don't really know how it works, but, uh, you know, that's, that's half the fun. Um, and finally, thank you very much for watching. You guys are awesome. You rock all the socks. And, uh, yeah, y'all take it easy. Keep gaming. I don't have a catch line or a catchphrase to play me out of the video. So I'm just going to sing and sing until you guys just click off. Don't forget the thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, I'm just gonna thank you for watching the video.